What's up everybody? Welcome back to the RT Clinic and it's been a while since I put out a video but I'm really excited about this one because you know if COVID has done anything besides really kind of mess up the lives of millions of people in 2020 um, it's caused us to think outside the box and I think that's where us in healthcare really work the best is when we can start thinking about ways to make it better for patients. So today I'm going to be converting my V60 into a heated high flow cannula without the internal hardware attached. I'm going to show you how to do that in three, two, one. seeing our standard V60 set up like this. We have a single limb circuit coming from the machine. Usually it goes through a heater. In this case I'm bypassing that. Goes through a heater, goes out, you can attach it to a mask. We can run our, our ST, we can run our CPAP, we can run our PCV, AVAPs, whatever you want to do, we can run that on our patient. We've done that a lot through this COVID-19 pandemic. So oxygenation has been at a premium <laughs> during this so um, what we're going to look at today is those patients that have been on their mask for a long time and converting them over to a heated high flow cannula if there was something that i've learned that is that heated high flow is really needed i mean and we've used it so much specifically to get patients off this mask let them eat let them start to recover wean that FiO2. The problem is in the past it's taken two different devices to do this. You've had to have your Airvo, you've had to have your Max Venturi, your Vapotherm, whatever it is, you've had to have that on top of your device like this. Well Philips came with a, came up with a module on the inside that actually you can you can purchase and put it on the inside, turns into heat and high flow cannula. Right? It makes sense. We got all the circuitry we need that we use with our Max Venturi. But uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do the poor man's version of it. So I'm going to show you how to convert it without actually having the internal module. So let's get to it. So the first thing we're going to look at here is we have it coming out of the machine and we have our circuit. Well, part of this circuit that you have to have is that whisper valve. You know, we have to have that. It's always going to have air coming out of this, and that's really important. So we've got to take that whisper valve out of this circuit. This is the cheap circuit, but to get that out, we have to cut it, get it out. I'll show you what it looks like. Pop that circuit off. <clears throat> There's my whisper valve by itself. So it's came out now. Still got my line, proximal pressure line, ready to hook up. Now I've got to hook up my heated wire circuit. So we have to have a heated wire heater. In this case, we've got an F&P heater. we got an intersurgical canister. we got all kinds of crazy stuff here, but... I'll show you. This is a standard single limb. Uh, we call this oxy hood setup. This could be a single limb BiPAP, but it's heated wire all the way out to the end on this inspiratory side. So we gotta get that hooked up first. We should have a hooked up any one of our BiPAP patients because we know that how dry that area is coming in. So let's go. We're gonna put one side on here, and then we have this going out to the patient. Well, we need to get our wires. So let's get our temperature wires. I'm going to wrangle them here. Really important part about wires, if you don't know, we have two different wands for these F&Ps. The blue one is actually measuring temperature, and the yellow is actually powered and heating the wires. So this one measures temperature, gives you feedback to your machine, and then we have one on top of the heater, and then we have one out here about as close as we can get to the patient out here. So the goal of this heater is to heat up in here to get it to either 37 or 31 out here. So we're constantly measuring this. This is very important. This one out here on the end, very important. So, and then we hook one side. We have two different sides here uh, for our power from the yellow. We're just gonna hook up one of them because we're not heating the expiratory side. That's what the yellow is for. So now we have our heated wire. And then 
this piece right here goes really nicely boom right into the end there so now we have our whisper valve on the end of our heated wire circuit so that's going to keep this really happy in the fact that we're going to have a proximal pressure going back to our machine so the next part is is adding a heated high flow cannula so the first cannula i have here is a resmed small cannula it's just because we don't use these a whole lot but this will this uh, setup will work with uh, an airbo cannula which are proprietary or any other type of heated high flow cannula you need something really important though this is our 22 mil adapter i call this a hard plastic sleeve this is a hard plastic version of the of the rubber rubber adapter so what this is going to do is going to connect this aspect right here as you can see plastic on plastic is pretty tight to this right here so we're going to add our cannula into it so there it is cannula is attached it's attached pretty tight if you did the rubber adapter there you could do that i just don't like putting rubber adapters in these circuits because if they do come off especially when they get warm patients are going to desat very quickly so the plastic on plastic is really nice for setting this thing up so we're running out of here heated wire all the way out to our cannula let's turn our machine on and we'll get it running so, show you some of these settings on here. Uh, first thing we're going to do, of course, you're going to go in and change your mask port. So, on a mask port, <clears throat> I'm not going to go to ET. I'm not going to go to one, two, three, or four. I'm going to go to other because I really don't know what it is. So, I'm going to hit other. And then I have, I still have whisper valve. So, I'm going to hit that whisper valve. So, right now, it's running. I have flow coming through this, as you can hear. So, one thing is you think, well, what do I set it on, Jimmy? We got CPAP, ST, PCV, AVAPS. And we don't have nasal cannula flow mode on there. Yeah, we don't. But so my initial thought was I'll put them on CPAP. Okay, put them on CPAP at 8. We're running CPAP through here. Well, that really sounds, we got nasal CPAP. These don't actually seal in the nose. Well, the one problem that you're going to run into with CPAP is, though, with this machine is you're going to have a low rate alarm because they're not triggering breasts at all. So it's going to think they're apneic and it's going to alarm a lot. So one thing that we had to do is we got to flip them over to an ST mode. There you go. There's your alarm. So we, we got to flip them over to ST mode. So you have to use ST for this. And this is the way we use ST. We come in and we set an IPAP of a certain pressure that we want. And we make, make an EPAP of one below it. We set a IPAP of 12 over an EPAP of 11, so only one difference between the two, and then we set a rate of 10. So it just goes from 11 to 12, 10 times a minute. Well, are you going to notice that when you're on the cannula? No, not at all. But it, what it does, because when I go in specifically to this, when I go in, I have to change my alarms, I, I won't alarm a uh, low rate. Because think about this. When you set up an Airvo, when you set up a, a um, a Max Venturi, a vapor Therm, what kind of alarms do you have? Well, you have squat. Well, we get, so we have to take away a lot of the alarms on this thing. That, is, that comes to another really important piece is that this can't be done by somebody who's just, you know, a novice at using these. Because when a patient goes from this back to a mask, you have to change those alarms back. I mean, you can't get lazy here, guys. You have to change those alarms back. So I'm going to show you how to change these alarms and shut them off. But you have to know if they go back on the mask, you've got to go into alarms and change these. So let's get back. We're looking at this. We're going to go into the alarms. And the easiest way to do it, and actually shut some of these off already, you're going to take these three bottom ones right here. So this one, this one, this one, and this one. So these three on the bottom, and then your low minute ventilation. And you're going to put this one at one, because that's the lowest it goes. Take your low tidal volume, shut it off. Take your lowest pressure, pressure, shut it off. And take your low minute ventilation, shut it off. Leave the rest of them on. I don't care. So right now what we're doing is when I seal this on a patient, we're not going to get any alarms. Well, that's good because we don't get any alarms when we run it through normal, um, when you know, a normal heated high flow cannula. So I'm running this on the patient, and we're running really well. These are way too small for my nose. And you're like, well, that's really nice, Jimmy, but I don't really know what my flow is. I can look at my pressures, and that's really great. I mean, I can try to look at my flow waveform and see what it is, you know, I can see flow over time, liters per minute, that kind of thing, and look at my FiO2, that's pretty important, that's really nice. Change my FiO2 to what I need, maybe I can keep the same FiO2 I was on before when they were on a BiPAP, 
we're not going to adjust it that way. Well, there, we did a little study, and this is a really the sciencey part that I like about this. Got with the biomed people, and we took a, a meter in here that will measure leader flow, and we placed this with three different sizes of prongs, large, medium, and small, on a patient, actually on one of us, and we changed our CPAP pressure, or sorry, really our EPAP pressure, and we just put the IPAP one above it, we went from 5, 10, 15, 20, and 25. And when, that, when we did that, we also measured the flow. Now this is actually probably more accurate than a flow that you get on anything else because this was out here. This was close to the patient. So we measured a flow and we found that when we plotted this on a graph, it was absolutely linear. So something with a large cannula, like a, like a large, will deliver more flow at those higher pressures. We kind of understand that, right? And a medium has a little bit lower flow and a small has a little bit lower flow. And I'll share this in a picture that I have, uh, our little study that we did, because what we're going to do is put together and say, if you have a patient that's on a large cannula, nasal prongs, and is on a CPAP of near 15, then their flow is this. And that's a good way to kind of think of it. Now, what does flow do? Well, what are we looking at? We're looking at meeting or, or exceeding their inspiratory flow demands, which is usually 20 or more. So in most cases, we are delivering more than 20. Uh, usually it's about 15. But we were able to deliver about 75 liters per minute when we had a large cannula up about 25, which is pumping. Really important part is to meet or exceed it and then monitor your FiO2 and wean that. So that's the great thing about a high flow cannula. So um, I'll share with you a little bit about that, that study. It was really interesting. But here's a great aspect to it. So your patient goes on this and then needs to go back on their mask so that we can, uh, maybe they need to go to sleep or they got finished eating. You got, you got one device here. Really cool part is, this comes off. I attach the mask right to here, and now they got a heated wire circuit for their mask, but I have to do one thing really, really important. Go back in and change my alarm settings. So I gotta turn my alarms back on back what I had before, all my alarms are back, I put them back on the settings they were before, and there you go, they're back on, S on ST with um, via mask. So we have the ST via mask, flip them over, plug this in, give them the high flow cannula, take them back to a mask, you can see this. Now usually we have a couple things in the room. This is really nice because we got one device doing both things. It's really good for the patient too because they have that heated wire both ways you look at it. So I hope you liked the video today. Like and subscribe to the channel. You can check out the merch down below. I've got a couple of shirts down there if you're interested in that kind of thing. And make sure you comment in and uh, give me some suggestions. I'm willing to go over just about anything as long as I have the device with me. So um, until later, take it easy.